after sharing everybody. So uh, just now we talk about a rather fourth model of atoms, and then uh, now today uh, now what what I'm going to talk about is uh, you know before much before Rutherford, right? Uh, many uh, scientists found uh, uh, what we call as a night spectrum, right? So so uh, people never knew about why spectrums occurs, right? Why there we find the spectrums, right? And people never uh, uh, were able to link between the structure of atoms and the spectral line, right? Or a spectrum of spectrums, right? Uh, produced by an atoms, right? So uh, this, uh, so much uh, study has been done. So much observation has been done uh, in the late nineteenth uh, uh, century, and then now. How we uh, could able to get the spectra is uh, if we if we allow uh, uh, an atomic gas right or a liquid or at a very low low pressure right if I let a atoms uh, if I if I keep atoms in a uh, in a tubes if I keep atoms gaseous atoms at a very low pressures and if I excite it by passing a current, right? If I excite it by passing a current, what, why, why we need a very low pressure is that if I, if I pressure is very low, uh, the gas is almost like an idle gas. If it's an idle gas, uh, there's no interactions. There's, uh, there's hardly any interaction between one atom with another atom, right? So therefore we say that, uh, so gas, atomic gas at a very low pressures, if we, if we excite it by passing a current, we get uh, we get nice spectrums. We get a spectrum. That means uh, the lights are coming out from such a, such a, uh, atoms, right? So this is what we call as emission spectrum. So so broadly speaking, so we divide a spectrum into a two case. That is uh, emission spectrums and uh, emission spectrums and uh, absorption spectrum. This is a continuous spectrum. Continuous spectrums are uh, very simple. If I allow a white light to pass through a glass prisms you you see a continuous spectrum continuous when there is no uh, there is no separation between one uh, 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 color with another color so this is continuous spectrum and in an atom we normally uh, when we study atoms we normally divide uh, uh, categorize uh, atomic spectra into two that is one is uh, emission spectrum and another one is uh, con uh, absorption spectrum actually both uh, Emission and absorption are one of the same, so only difference is uh, in one case uh, absorption of light taking place, in another case emission of light taking place. So this I will explain you, right? Uh, so what I mean, right? When I say uh, emission spectrums, right? Uh, emission spectrum occurs if I excite a uh, gaseous atoms, right? If I excite a gaseous atoms, uh, the electron of an atom, the atom get excited. That means electron of an atom goes at a higher energy levels, right? When it goes to a higher energy levels, then ele electrons start coming down to a lower energy level. While while electron coming down to a lower energy lower energy level, electron emits photons, right? Electron emits photons, right? And that photon we get uh, from such a uh, atom is what we call as emission spectrums all right and then what about absorption spectrums absorption spectrum is is that if i have an atom like this is uh, this is a uh, gaseous atoms at very low pressures and then if i send a white light if i send a white light and then uh, and then what we found is that uh, uh, when we when we when we get a uh, when, when when a light uh, comes out from this uh, uh, these gaseous atoms, we find some spectral lines are missing, right? We find a dark spectral line. We we find a dark line in a in a in a in a in a in a spectrums, and those dark lines are nothing but uh, the the photons or the inner the light absorbed by a uh, uh, gaseous atoms, right? The light absorbed by a gaseous atoms, right? If a one a light get absorbed by gaseous atoms, uh, it will not, uh, it will not allow it to come out from a gaseous atom. So this is what we call as uh, absorption spectrums. 
Absorption spectrums, uh, the absorption of light taking place by an atom and then undergo excitations. Emission spectrums, right? Uh, gaseous are, the gaseous atoms are excited and then they keeps on emitting uh, a light with, uh, with uh, certain frequencies and a certain wavelength, right? So this is what we talk about emission spectrum. So emission spectrums, we find a bright a few lines, a few bright lines on a on a dark background, right? So, and then one more information I would like to give you is these emission spectrums, right? Uh, act like a fingerprint, or when when I, when I say a fingerprint, this this gives the identity, right? Every atom has a unique spectrum lines. Every atom has a unique spectrum, right? Atomic spectrum. Every atom has a unique atomic spectrum, right? So, there are, how to identify the one atom from another is looking at the spectral lines. When you look at the spectral lines, and if this particular spectral line mess with particular element, then we say that this atom belongs to uh, this, right? This consists of that particular element. So, therefore, this is very, very important, right? If you go higher classes, this is what we uh, spectros. Uh, there is there is one big branch of physics called uh, spectroscopy, right? Uh, so there you are going to study. And now, uh, now this is how we we, we do, right? So uh, this is a neon gas, right? Neon gas that neon neon atoms are available, and I excite it by passing a current. Then emission take place, and this is the neon, uh, you know, the the light we get from a neon atoms. And then we, I just allow it to pass through a lens, just, just culminate it and make it pass through our spectrometers and then we would see the different, uh, different lines, right? So this is what we have. And these are some spectral lines. Okay, now, now talking, talking to our, now our aim is to study uh, a hydrogen spectrum, right? Our aim is to study a hydrogen spectrum. So this is what, this is the visible spectrum, right? So the distribution of electromagnetic radiation emitted by a substance whose atom has been excited by a heat. So that's the this is normally hydrogen atom, right? This is this is the hydrogen spectrum, right? Okay, now look at it. This is uh, now we would like to study a uh, hydrogen atom, right? Uh, uh, spectrum of hydrogen atom, emission emission line uh, emission line in the uh, spectrum of hydrogen atoms. So look at here. This is. Uh, this is what we get out of hydrogen atoms. If I if I allow a hydrogen atom to excite at a very low pressures, and we are going to get these spectrums. Uh, no, normally, uh, no. When you, when you when you look at this at the very first sight, we will see that there is some kind of random uh, line, right? This this looks something like a random line. However, when you when you look it very carefully, when you look it very carefully, uh, you will see. Uh, several sets of spectral lines. We will see a several set of spectral lines, right? I see a set of spectral lines. Sets of spectral lines. All right. Set of spectral lines. And if you if you just see particular set of spectral lines, you you see some kind of pattern, right? A nice pattern, right? Pattern is that. As you go higher and higher, if as as the frequency, if as the wavelength decreases, as the wavelength decreases, the distance between the spectral lines start decreases. Right? As the wavelength decreases, look at this. This is for this spectral uh, spectral series. For this spectral series, as the wavelength decreases, wavelength decreases, the distance between the distance between the spectral lines start decreases. Distance between the spectral lines start decreasing, and after some time, the line become very, very close. Right? Again, here, right? Look at here, right? When you when you, when you go from a, a longer wavelength to a shorter wavelength, right? When you go from longer wavelength to shorter wavelength, the distance between the spectral lines start decreasing. Distance between the spectral lines start decreasing, and and such a uh, the first. The observations or the study was carried out by uh, 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 a scientist or oh, uh, the Jacob Blummer. He was a teacher, right? And he found a Blummer series. He found a Blummer series, right? And when he found a Blummer series, and he looked, he he just studied the pattern, right? He studied the pattern of a spectral line. When he studied the pattern of spectral line, he could able to derive 
uh, uh, some empirical formula, right? Some empirical formula. Look at here. When you, when you, when you, so as as you go, as the uh, wavelengths start decreasing, this distance. And uh, look at here. This distance start decreasing. This distance start decreasing. Distance between those two spectral lines are decreasing as wavelength decreases. As wavelength decreases. So he tried to figure out what is the relation, right? What is the relation between wavelength and those spectral lines? Wavelength and those spectral lines. And, and he could have gone to derive uh, empirically uh, one formula, right? This is the formula. And he says that this is the formula that he has derived. 1 by lambda is equal to r. r is called Ribbon constants. Uh, 1 by this these are the spectral lines all right these are the these are the uh, these are the energy level right these are the energy level this is the second this is the nth energy level right second and n this is the second level and this is the n level right look at here so this was found by a blower right and uh, uh, you know uh, the electron can come out from n n is n goes from uh, 3 4 5 6 7 so on for blubber series and this electron from this level right electron from electron from electron from uh, third level fourth level fifth level sixth level come down to uh, second level right second level right so that's the point second level and and depending on this we get a spectral line depending on this we get a spectral lines so he could have able to he could have able to uh, you know experimentally uh, verify his his uh, formula right that is now look at here the first one is this right first one is this longest wave that right so that means look at here when when i when i put this three number number three when i when i put this number three when I put this number 3, that means electrons coming out from like this, right? Electron from third, third level to uh, second level. Electron from first level to uh, third level to second level, right? And if I use this, uh, this is the Rydberg constants. And if I substitute, and finally we got this, all right, this is a wavelength. This is a and this is a wavelength and this is a wavelength which is equivalent to alpha hydrogen. Alright, alpha hydrogens. So that means that alpha hydrogens, alright, this alpha hydrogen, that these spectral lines is obtained by electron coming down from third level to second levels. Electron coming down from third level to second level. Let's say if I have it like this. This is a second, this is third, let's say this is a fourth, something like this. So this alpha hydrogen is obtained by electron uh, undergoing transition from uh, third level to second level. Third level to second level, right? Third level to second level, right? And you can go on like this. So if I if I keep this, uh, if I if I keep let's say a fourth to seconds. We get a shorter wavelength. We got a shorter wavelength, and we got a shorter wavelength, and then uh, a, uh, a shorter wavelength and higher frequency. And like this, if I if electron can come from the electron can come fifth to uh, second, right? So so this again with a shorter wavelength, still shorter wavelength with a, uh, a higher frequency. This was empirically the. the the formula was derived empirically by uh, Blumer, right? So later, later, uh, scientists could found few more spectral series, spectral series, right? Few more spectral series, right? Few more spectral series, and those spectral series are this, right? Lemon series, right? Lemon series, and then. Another one is a Blumer series, is found by a Blumer, and this is a passion series. And now uh, the, the the pattern is that, right? Uh, entire this spectral series, right? That whether it is a lemon series or a 
a passion series or a fun series, we'll find it, we'll find it. All the structural series can be answered by, can be explained by using a Blummer uh, formula. Right? Blummer formula, what is that Blummer formula? Uh, lambda is equal to uh, a Riba constants. All right. And this is the, the final, right? N. Mm, and then what we get is this is from initial, right? All right. This is what we have. So now what, what we are going to see is, what we are going to see is that for blubber, we, we can get this entire spectrum series, right? Using this formula. For Levin series, uh, what we can do is, for Levin series, what we can do is, n is, n is 1, all right? n is 1, 2, uh, that electron undergoing transition from, from a higher level to a higher level to 1. That is what we talk about, right? Uh, look at here, that means mm, formula is that uh, 1 by lambda is equal to r 1 by 1 minus 1 by n square. Now, where n is equal to 2, 3, 4, 5 goes on. This is the Lenin series. And a Blummer series, we found it, right? 1 by lambda is equal to r uh, 1 by 2 square minus 1 by n square. We are n is equal to 3, 4, 5, 6, so on. Alright. And then special series, which 1 by lambda is equal to r 1 by 3 square minus 1 by n square, where n is equal to 4, 5, 6, so on. And goes on like that. Alright. So that means this spectral series is having a much higher frequency. And this spectral series comes in the ultraviolet, and a Blummer series comes in a visible ray, a visible range, and the patients then infrared, and then infrared with a longer wavelength. Right. This is what we have. So this is what we have. So therefore, I just say a spectral series of an atom. atom. This is the patient series, all right. And all the Blummer formula. We extend the Blummer formula. Only extension is that I move for uh, uh, instead of two, I put one. Instead of uh, two, I put three. Instead of that means that the finally electron comes down to a first energy level from higher energy level, third energy level from higher energy level, fourth energy level. Electron undergoing transition to fourth energy level from higher energy level, and electron undergoing transition, right? Electron come down to a fifth energy level from higher energy level. This is what we have. So we have a, these are the spectral series of hydrogen atoms, all right? And this this formula, this entire formula, could tell uh, this spectral series, right? So, so that means now, uh, now we could able to figure out that this spectral series, right, would tell the structure of an atoms and would tell uh, the position of an electron in an atom. All right, and 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 that uh, no, uh, uh, you know, atom of model, right? No atom of model like Rutherford, J.J. Thomson could able to explain those uh, spectral series, right? Those spectral lines, right? They fail to explain those spectral lines. They could not link between the spectrums of hydrogen atoms and other atoms with uh, with their model right so so this is what we have so this is a uh, uh, i have here the different spectral line of an atom hydrogen we have this and then helium this is this is for helium uh, this is for mercury and this is for sodium sodium is normally we say yellow light because sodium could uh, you know, gives out the yellow light only, right? So now we would like to talk about the Rutherford model. So the uh, the very first limitation is that Rutherford model could not able to explain, uh, the, could not able to link, right? Could not able to give a relationship between a spectral line, right? Spectral line, uh, spectrums of uh, atoms with uh, his model, right? Actually, the spectral lines are very much related to the structural atom. He was not able to, able to explain the spectral line of an atoms and all, right? This is the first limitation. Why? 
Why? Because it is classical, right? So Rutherford model. Uh, so if I, uh, Rutherford model is uh, strictly based on a classical electromagnetic uh, theory, right? So since it is uh, strictly based on a classical electromagnetic theory, so when electron goes around nucleus, electron is every time electron is under acceleration. That means electron under undergoing acceleration, accelerated electrons. And uh, according to a classical uh, electromagnetic theories, the revolving electrons, the accelerated electron give rise electromagnetic waves, give rise electromagnetic waves whose frequency is equal to the frequency of uh, accelerated uh, electron going around nucleus. If it is so, then electron is losing energies. If electron energy, if electron, if energy of electrons start decreasing, and then according to his models, says that after some time electrons spiral into a nucleus. That means uh, his model of atom says that an atom is unstable. Every time atom is unstable, atoms collapse in a nucleus. Why? Because an atom keeps on losing energies, right? If it is so, if electrons, uh, if if uh, when electron going around nucleus, if ele ele electron keep radiating uh, uh, electromagnetic radiations, then then electron could have uh, could give uh, a continuous spectrum instead of a line spectrum, right? So he was not able to explain the stability of an atom. Why? Because his model is strictly based on uh, classical electromagnetic theory, right? And then more, he talks about orbit electron going around the nucleus. However, he uh, he could not able to tell the arrangement of electron in orbits. Arrangement of arrangement of of an electron in a uh, in the orbit. So these are the limitation of a Rutherford model, right? And then and then afterwards, uh, you know, uh, it was a JJ Thomson, right? He was he was working uh, uh, in a Rutherford model for uh, several uh, months, and then he 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 could able to find the limitation of uh, Rutherford model, and he he used. Uh, 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 early quantum mechanic idea to explain uh, the hydrogen atom and and his model is what we call as the Bohr model of atoms. Bohr model of atoms. And uh, look at this. Uh, his Bohr model of atom. His why his model is a uh, little um, far better than uh, uh, Rutherford model is. Rutherford model is uh, is a purely classical. And as far as uh, Bohr model is concerned, Bohr models includes uh, uh, several uh, uh, quantum mechanic ideas about uh, electrons and atoms, right? So, so Bohr, uh, you know, Bohr model, Bohr theory is in the form of a three postulates, right? So to, to, today we will uh, we will do this, all right? So he says that now he has to explain. He has to explain a spect uh, spectral lines. He has to explain a spectral line, and he has to link that spectral line with the structure of an atom. Right? Uh, his first postulate is that yes, uh, he, he he found that while while doing uh, uh, while while he was uh, studying in uh, his uh, the Rutherford lab, he found that yes, uh, that classical electromagnetic theory is not applicable to uh, to atoms. Uh, subatomic particle like atoms, right? Classical electrodynamic uh, electromagnetic theory is not applicable to electron going around nucleus. He, he, he found that, right? And then that is why he started using a quantum mechanic, right? He, say, he says that yes, electrons are going around nucleus uh, without radiating radiations. Yes, electron goes around nucleus. Uh, however, electron doesn't emit uh, ra ra radiations. Why? Because uh, uh, this classical electromagnetic theory is not applicable to an electron that that is inside a nuclear that is inside atom. He says that. All right, and then and then more. He says that uh, electron doesn't occur. Electron doesn't take the arbitrary uh, orbits. Electron always takes the specified orbits, and he's termed this as a non-radiating orbits. Electron always takes a non-radiating orbit. Uh, when electron goes around nucleus at this orbit, electron never emits radiation. So, so, so he says that an atom in an atom, in, an electron in an atom would revolve in a certain stable orbit. This is a stable orbit. 
without the emission of radiant energy. Each atom has a certain uh, definite stable state in which it can exist. So that means this orbit is what we call as non-radiating orbits. This is what we call as non-radiating orbits. All right. This is what we call as non-radiating orbits. So atom exists at this orbit, right? So there, there could be so, so many uh, non-radiating orbits with a higher energy, with a higher energy, with higher energy. Right? That's what talks about. Now, now the point is, if he says that there's and what is what is the features of that particular orbit? What is the conditions? What kinds of condition that orbit must satisfy? Then his answer was. Uh, the second postulates. So he says that yes, electron doesn't radiate electromagnetic radiations when electron goes around uh, nucleus at a particular specified orbits, right? And then he says the electron revolves around the nucleus only in those orbit for which this is the condition for this is the condition this is the condition this is the features of uh, non-radiating orbits. This is the condition for non. Angular momentum, right? He says that angular momentum. He says that angular momentum of uh, non-radiating orbit is always equal to integral multiple of h by two pi. This is the this is the this is the uh, this is the definition of a uh, non-radiating orbits. All right, non-radiating orbit must that is where h is a Planck constant. Where h is a Planck constant, 2 is a pi, and n is what we call as a principal quantum number, right? So n tells you the number of orbits, right? Tells you the number of orbit, numbers of orbit, energy levels of orbit, or, or I say energy levels of orbit, energy levels of or energy levels of orbit. All right, this is what we have. And now, now he talks about. Uh, the stable orbit, right? He talks about a stable orbit and he talks about non relating orbit and the condition, uh, the, no, I mean, the condition or, uh, for a particular non relating orbit, right? Now, the third uh, point he has to emphasize is on uh, spectral lines, all right? So he says that, yes, uh, there, there are spectral lines we, find, uh, we, we found, and spectral lines are due to electron undergoing transition from higher energy level to lower energy that's that's his point right that is the non radiating orbit higher non higher non radiating orbit to a lower non radiating orbit that's the point so spectral therefore you find uh, a, a line spectral lines a line spectra right not a continuous spectrums right so an electron can make a transition from one of its specified non radiating orbit to another lower energies. An emitted photon has an energy equal to an energy gain between non. So this is the this is the energy, right? This is the energy of this is the energy of energy of a photons uh, uh, emitted while electron undergoing transition from higher energy to lower energy. And that is equal to this is equal to E i minus E f. E i is a higher energy and E f is a low energy, right? So this is what this is the, this is what we have, what we talk about, and energies. And then I say that yes, absorption spectrum we could have explained, right? Well, if electron, if electron absorb energy, if electron absorb energy, electron can undergo a transition from lower energy level to higher energy level. So that means electron doesn't, you know, that he could have explained uh, entire uh, absorption spectrum, right? So, uh, electron doesn't absorb a random energies. Electron only absorbs a certain specified uh, energy uh, so that electron could go to a particular uh, specified non radiating orbit, right? So this is what we talk about his model and this third could able to explain the spectral line of an hydrogen atoms, all right? So uh, with this, I will uh, con conclude. And next class, we would like to uh, further, you know, we would like to explain uh, the uh, the fine spectral line of hydrogen atom uh, using Bohr model. Thank you.